Okay, it says we're live. Let me make sure. You never get the thing to switch to live chat. Come on, go to live chat, you stupid thing. Yeah, it always takes a moment. I think it's the glove. <laughs> <clears throat> no, nope, it refuses to change. Come on, change. Well, everybody that can go to live chat. Come on. How come I don't see it yet? What the heck? Oh boy, oh boy. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm still oh, trying to find live chat. It won't go. If it's on live, if it's big and bold, is it already on live? Um, can, they can hear us. Can you see the chat? I can see it. Uh-huh. Then you're fine. I just don't know if it's live or top. So on the top left, does it say live chat on top or top and top chat on the bottom? Yeah. Then it's on live chat. Okay, good. Hi, Candace. Hi, Desiree. I mean, Diana, I always do that. We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, hey, everyone. Hey, Tracy, Suzette, Sally. Creations from the heart. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Marva. Hi, Suzette. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Barbara. We have two Barbs and Barb K. Hi. We have Eileen, Christine, Lisa, Suzette. Hello, everybody. Hola. I just got back from a rainy weekend at the shore, but it was okay. We had fun. <laughs> Hello from New Orleans. Is that what NOLA is, right? Yeah. NOLA. Hello, Emily in Canada. Hey. Eh? Hi, Gloria. Gloria. Hi. Hello, happy people. We are back. So first things first, let me introduce my special guest while everyone's coming in. Um, in case you don't know, this is Tracy T. She has her own channel. It is called Not Afraid of Color. She is one of the admins for FSC as well. So please make sure that you follow her channel she does a lot of neat uh, things in, I would say mixed media is more of her niche. I mean, she does a little bit of everything. Um, she has the Chucky Gate video where actually she puts candy into her Chucky. So you definitely want to go check that video out. So, you know, while you're, while you're crafting, if you get a little hungry and need a snack, you can do that. Um, but thank you, Tracy, for joining me tonight. I'm happy to be here. Happy to see everybody. So cool. I stopped right. caring, Nancy. You stopped what? Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we Super call her T, so we don't get confused with the two Tracys. Um, but since we only have one Tracy on here, although we have our other Tracy adminning for us tonight. Thank you, Tracy. Um, no power in Jersey, so I left just in time, Donna. Yeah, I left <laughs> around after we had brunch and then we left because there's a, a tropical storm coming, Henry, and it looks like it's going to get pretty ugly. And it was, it was kind of overcast and dark, like it would peek through the sun, but you could tell this was going to be a dirty, ugly storm coming through. Yes. How, they want to know how many times have you filled your Chucky? Never. I don't like Skittles. I had, I made one with M&Ms and I keep eating those. So I made one with Skittles. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like everybody please to write down Tracy's channel. Again, we will link it down below, but it is not afraid of color. She just passed 500 subscribers. She just did a giveaway for her subscribers, but um, I'm telling you, she does a lot of interesting things, a lot of different ways to look at things. And I like 
Tracy's a, a natural teacher. So the way she explains things doesn't tell you what to do, but why to do it that way. Um, so I love the way that she explains things step by step and what she's doing. She's also a member of the Fairy Hugs design team. So you'll see some things on there for that as well. And just overall naturally talented artistic and I think you guys will really enjoy her videos she has this series called quickies and you definitely want to check that out everybody likes quickies that's right I like quickies <laughs> <laughs> all right don't forget to change to live chat yes all right Donna says, T, thank you for her package. She loves everything in it. I hope you're welcome. Yay. Glad you got it. Hi, Sheila. All right. I got to meet Miss Sheila. In Sheila, you need to email me. I have you won something on my giveaway and I don't have your e I don't have your address. Sheila is in, I think, Ohio. So she's not too far. Mm -mm. Good. Nope. Okay. All right. So we are on because there was a heated debate going on between Tracy and I. <laughs> so behind the scenes, as most of you may know, Tim Holtz has launched a limited edition product and it is the Distress mica stains okay so distress mica stains and hold off to do your shopping till the end because we will have links for everything at the end and we will give you guys our thoughts pros and cons between the different products we've been testing out but tracy and i this week have been doing all kinds of uh sampling and trying out of different sprays and colors and Tracy's like me, where we want to try to save some money where we can, and we wanted to see if we could make our own and duplicate our own for those of you that are on a fixed budget um, to see, you know, what else is there in the market? What is the shelf life of mica sprays? Belinda, we don't know that. We, well, I can give you a rough idea, but um, yes, that's one of the things we'll find out. I can tell you that some of the micas that I tried, the sprays, um, are 15 years old the tattered angels ones that i have are the original inventors as far as i know going back to scrapbooking days of the mica sprays and i'll show you what those look like if you guys still have them and tracy you don't have any of these mm -mm. no okay so the the company is called tattered angels they are still around they are called glimmer mist and they are these thin spray bottles you get i believe an ounce in here two ounces, you get two ounces, but you can see the mica down at the bottom, right? So when this company came out, they launched a whole line of products you could use, including, and I've used a couple of them. Um, they had these full-size tags. They have these um, chipboard tiles. They called the Tattered Angels chip tiles. I'll show you guys those. They also created their own stencils and masks. So that way, when you made um, designs with these sprays, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today, what kinds of things could you do with them? So we, we have 12 things we're going to talk about what you can do with these sprays. But these, if you have any of these, some of the tips that they gave, I've gone to a couple of shows with, with seeing them, were never shake them. Because when you shake them, air bubbles get into the bottom. When air bubbles get into the bottom, air bubbles go up the tube. And when air bubbles go up the tube with the mica, it basically clogs your bottle. I will tell you, I had a lot of problems with these during my experimentation, maybe because of the age, I don't know, 15 years. So one of the other things I learned is when you are done spraying, you always want to have a paper towel nearby. Instead of shaking these, you should gently be rolling these. And that's the case with, I think, most of these companies is you should be rolling them. And as you roll them, the mica will call, fall down into the spray, into the stain, into the color, and eventually come off of the bottom. But do not do any shaking, do rolling. And also always clean your nozzle when you are done spraying. And that will hopefully prevent the nozzle tip from getting clogged and dried with mica. So that's a tip for, I think, all of these sprays 
Um, but in these particular, I did have a little bit of a cloggy issue. Now, once I took, if that happens to you, took this part off and went and soaked this nozzle in some warm soapy water after a few minutes, worked fine. So I'm not going to toss them in the trash. Oh, let me show you here exactly what I'm talking about. You can see where's, come on camera, focus, focus. But you can see inside there that it's not a full circle. There's mica built up on this side and this side. So when the mica dries, the stain kind of um, leaves, but the mica stays there. And I have little mica bits in there that I can pick off. So just one of the tips that I learned, I don't know if Tracy had any similar issues with some of the things that she was using. Um, usually it's with, it's with older product because you've had it for a while and that product has gone up the straw and everything else. Yeah, um, honestly, the, um, my homemade ones, okay? So when we go into pros and cons, I'll go into the cons of the homemade ones. Um, on the, on the econ, on the economy, <laughs> because yeah, you get what you pay for. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Do we have most everybody here? We have 51 folks. Hi, Kythera. We just started. Well, Linda, I did order the Nuvo ones. They did not get here in time. I don't know if Tracy has any of the new ones. I don't think so. Do you know? Do you have the Nuvo ones now? So we're no, primarily, I, I think, going to be comparing um, Tattered Angels versus the new Tim Holtz. Pull my little handy tray over here. Look how nice this storage system is from Crafty Critter. Love it. Um, we're going to be comparing the Tim Holtz distress mica sprays stains sorry mica stains which come in two packages of limited edition colors and the one that i got has jack-o-lantern flickering candle and empty tomb so it's basically orange a yellow golden color and a dark gray i would say closer to um gunmetal is what i would say and then, Tracy, do you want to show them the other package that it comes in? Yeah, the other package has the um, the Hocus Pocus, which is a purple. And to me, it's exactly the um, color of seedless preserves. We've got the Bubbling Cauldron, which is a green. And where is that broomstick? Was it the Crooked Broomstick or is that the one you had? Yeah, Hi. Crooked Broomstick, which is kind of a gold. Brown. Yep. So I don't have that one yet. Hi, Simon. So Belinda says, just talking about storage. So wonder if they should all be stored on their side. Um, I get, I, I do not know that. I don't, I have always stored mine standing up and I didn't have any problems with some of the other sprays we're going to try out here, which are the, the ones that a lot of you guys bought. which are the shimmering mist, I mean, shimmering bliss, sorry, shimmering bliss sprays, can't talk, shimmering bliss sprays from Technique Junkies. Um, I think this was the primary contender against these micas. Um, and I'll just show you the difference here. The distress mica stains are one ounce. The shimmering bliss are two ounces. The shimmering bliss come in 25 colors. Um, and these only come in six limited edition colors, not counting the three original metallic colors. Right, which I have as well. I have those. And also one more I threw in the mix because they were right next to each other are the Dilutions Shimmer Sprays. And the reason I threw these in the mix were they're manufactured by the same company. So dilutions, shimmer sprays versus distressed mica stains. Are they the same or not? And a price comparison, the distressed stains I paid, I think $11.99 for three at Joann's. The dilutions were 
a little less. I want to say they were on sale. So I got them for like eight bucks for three. And then the Shimmering Bliss, I don't have that right in front of me. If Tracy's on, she can tell us how much those are. I want to say they're close to uh, right around $7. Okay. That's probably about right. And we got a sale. We got them when they were on sale. because She gave us a special discount for um, Stamp With Me. And there is this, by the way. <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> we do have discounts. Yep. Simon says storing them on their side helps them move more easily, mix the shimmer and not have it clogged. I know Diane stores hers on the side. So thank you, Simon. So Simon saying best practice is to store them on the side and that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Okay. Tracy says they're $4.99 each. $4.99. $4.99. So basically a dollar more because if you break these down, they're $4 each. If most places are selling for 12 bucks, right? So these yeah. would be, I'm oh, sorry, the distress. So these would be $4. These would be $5, but you get twice as much. But the question is, how do they compare to each other, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else you want to throw in there, Tracy? And we're going to be doing our, our make your own kind of comparison to, to ones we did make. Uh, just a disclaimer, if you make your own, um, I had a reaction to the mica. Um, so might want a mask up because the little particles are so tiny. And if you have any kind of lung things at all or sinus things, just to be on the safe side, I would recommend masking up if you make your own with the mica powders. Like I have these mica powders here. And like the next day after I was making my sprays, I could hardly breathe. And I knew that was what was going on. So just disclaimer right there. Yes, wear masks, wear gloves and protect your surface. So on that note, I think we should go hands down. All right. Let's see how that works for me. <laughs> I haven't done that. I haven't done that in a minute either. Wow. This going live thing is weird. Let's see here. Oh, my phone is really hot. Okay. Let me unplug it from the charger. Okay. I can see Nancy. Where am I? On the ceiling, you have to flip I'm your on the camera. Ceiling. How did that happen? Okay, no problemo. Let me flip over. Take your time. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yes, gloves, 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 gloves. Nancy went and got her nails done, and something happened, and I can't hear you. Now I can see you. you gotta turn the Let volume up. Okay. You gotta turn your camera uh, ninety degrees to the right. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> Guys, this is where I run into problems. Let's see if I can do it. Hang tight. Take your time. But my nails were stained, you guys. So, uh, yes, definitely wear gloves. How's that? Uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're the right way, but the camera is still long ways. So, I think Tracy used to have this problem and she would have to go out and come back in. Let's see if I can flip it around and if it'll work. You Apple phone people. Now you're upside down. Now I'm upside down. Holy smokes. The other What's thing I, I recommend you. if you guys are going to do sprays are some kind of a box. This is a box that I got from my favorite things and I've been using it for years. I call it my spritz box and I just line it with a whole bunch of paper towels and you can see look at all the pretty shimmery paper towels I have but I just you know once they get to a point where they don't hold any more moisture then I um, change them out but this is a good way to kind of contain some of that spray and also you may want to have some kind of a heat gun or heat tool if you are impatient and you want to speed up your drying. So I'm here, but I can't hear anything. <laughs> turn, try, is it, turn the volume up. Did you turn the volume down when it went on the, um, I might've thing. Okay. Is Perlex a mica category? Yeah. Uh, Perlex is a mica. I don't, I didn't use it. Didn't know if, don't know if Tracy did or not. I used quite a few different ones, which um, I will talk to you guys about. I might have, let me see here. Uh, no, Brusho. I use Brusho. Okay, for that's fine. Oh, Katie has a good idea. You know what, Katie? I have a whole bunch of those. 
She uses puppy pads. Girl, I got to steal that idea. Oh, that's a great idea. A great. I have a whole box of them because we weren't sure if Leo was potty trained or not when we adopted him. And turns out, thank goodness he is. So I have a whole box of them. I yeah, am Melissa, just... some of them come out really pretty. Yes. You just moved some stuff out of the way here. Um, when I made my homemade ones, I used... Um, Simon Hurley inks, mm -hmm. and I have to use some watercolor. Okay, just trying to get my splat box situated here so people can see it. Okay. All right, so can you hear us, Tracy? Yeah, yeah, I, I okay. accidentally turned the volume down. Oh, you're fine. So Tracy is using a proper splat box, which I think you guys can pick up from Ranger, and we will link. No, I'm not. Uh, it's not, it's a regular box? Yeah, it's a prime box. I just oh, cut it myself. Like a proper one. Turn it on its side so they can see how to cut it. I thought it was one of those fancy proper ones. Look at you, go girl. So she just cut a flat part at the top and angled down the side and left a little about two inches in the front there. Cool. Whatever you got works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, normally I use my Simon Says um, stamp, my monthly kit. Yeah. Uh, because it's a good box too, but I thought I'd use this one so I don't get a bunch of ink on my camera. Okay. All right. Can you guys see both of us, hear both of us? Okay. Yes, Tracy Schultz uses, uses a drying rack when hers are done spraying. Good idea. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about some of the ideas and then we'll talk about the sprays for, um, I wrote down 12 things you can use your sprays for. So make sure you save this video so you can go back and watch it. So the first one I think is the easiest one is making backgrounds. Right? And I mean, just, just, just spraying them. So obviously you can um, mix and match your sprays. And I'll talk about what my combination of colors and sprays here. These are my samples and I used watercolor cardstock. I would recommend some kind of a thicker cardstock, either watercolor or heavy duty, hundred pound or more base because these obviously you're spraying a, a liquid medium on here. So they're gonna get wet, they're gonna curl up, um, but you could essentially use these on any porous surface. And we're gonna talk more about that too. So I would say just, just making backgrounds and then um, what kinds of things could you use on those backgrounds? And we're gonna add to that stencils. Mm -hmm. so I think stencils are the easiest. Here I have um, a bat stencil. So I made the background and then this is an old bat stencil. I'm sorry, I don't know who makes it. It's been a long time. Um, an old bat stencil I sprayed through. Here's the Simon Hurley ghost, so cute. So make sure you use Pixie Spray. Pixie Spray is your best friend when it comes to spraying this kind of a product because you don't want any of that liquid getting underneath and seeping under your stencil. So definitely you want to use some kind of Pixie Spray before you spray your sprays through stencils. Or, um, or you can make your own stencil. There we go. Transfer paper and a die and it will stick to your paper just like pixie and it'll lift right off i made my own i didn't uh spray any on to any of these though because i was doing other things so sh show them what it looks like go ahead so um this is a plain white piece of ribbon and i don't know if you can see i did kind of an ombre this is the tim holtz one this is the um what does he call this purple? It's a Distress Mica in the Hocus Pocus. This is my handmade purple, and this is my handmade blue. So ribbon, hey, who knew, right? Uh, okay, this is just a piece of fabric. Again, I used my handmade on this one just to test it out. And uh, we'll talk about handmade and what happens with it <laughs> later okay we've got this is the burlap i used uh, the 
pumpkin one. What is it called? Where is it? The jack-o'-lantern. And you can't really see the mica on here unless you're right, right up close to it. And we've got this one, which I think came out pretty cool. It's just a piece of like muslin fabric. And I used the broomstick one and you can really see the sparkle in it and it doesn't come off. That's, you know, one, except for if it's still wet, of course, cause see it on my glove. And I think I showed you guys why I had showed you that gauze technique because gauze, I mean, why not? Um, I'm trying to get blood. This is the closest I could get and it's too cherry. <laughs> I mean, I wish my blood was in color. Yeah, you gotta add a little bit darker. Do you have dragon's blood? <laughs> I do, yes I do. <laughs> and so uh, I do and I have also a formula I think I have to make some blood red because there isn't, what surprised me with these is that there wasn't a blood red. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's the very limited, you only get six colors. So you gotta use what you got or use some other ones. And that's the other thing I wanted to point out was don't feel obligated to stay in the box of a certain um, <clears throat> product. So what I mean by that is there are a lot of companies, you mix and match your papers, you mix and match your stamps. So I don't feel like there is one clear winner over the others. There, is, there are some that I like more than others for different reasons, but I'm going to talk about that as we go through this. I think mixing them was, was the best thing ever because then I got, you know, whatever I wanted out of it. Right. The colors you want and stuff. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to talk about real quick about how I swatched mine out and what they look like. I'm going to put a couple links here in case you guys want to look around while we're doing that. I'll start swatching and I'm yeah. using watercolor. This is just cheap, cheap Walmart watercolor paper. Okay. Cause I'm not going to do swatching on my expensive stuff. <laughs> no one blames you for that. And I'm starting out with the, with the Tim Holtz collection. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to show you guys the ones that I did swatch out and what my thought process was behind them. And Tracy, you jump in anytime you have a um, epiphany moment or anything that's going on there. And I would say, you know, talk about the distance too, when you're spraying what you get from a close spray versus a further back spray right okay so this is this is a close one and then the, let's go 12 inches back then you're going to get that little splattery thing that you know is kind of cool on on certain cards or or projects that you're doing where you don't want full coverage you just want you know a little bit of splatter you can even go farther back but I pretty much saturated this one. So we'll set it aside to dry, kind of let me go that way. Yep. So Melinda, we're gonna talk about that. One of the other things I wanna talk about when you're making your backgrounds is obviously when these dry, you can paint on them. You can do dry stenciling over them or um, ink stenciling. You can uh, stamp on them, paint on them. You can heat emboss over them. So I have a couple of samples I wanna show you guys for that. These are, um, these are when Tattered Angels came out with these sprays, like I said, they, they made a whole bunch of accessories to go with these sprays. So you may be able to find some of these at Tuesday morning. I know they're still in business. Honestly, I haven't shopped them in a long time. So I picked these up and a clearance sale, but these are their tags. They had a lot of different ones. So on this tag, I just sprayed a couple of colors on here and I'll talk about what causes the effect in some of those colors. Like you can see this one almost has like an interference mica in it. And this one has more of a glittery mica in it. And then this other one is a chip tile. This was their Halloween and I did pick this up at Tuesday morning. And when you spray it, it accepts the ink and dries quickly. And then I went over it with a color pencil and colored in the raised areas. So we have this cool kind of scene. So you can buy products and spray them. Here's another one I found. I think that some, one of you guys sent me this as a giveaway item. Uh, these are called... Prima Marketing 2012 Resist Canvas. So this little bird, I just sprayed it. It already had the resist on there. 
I know that Bria Reese makes a watercolor, um, watercolor pad. I think I gave that away in a giveaway. You can pick up at Target. And all I did was spray it. It already had the resist on there, but you can see that shimmer. And I'm going to talk about that. Notice the difference between this mica and this one is more of a shimmer, almost like glitter. And I know it's difficult for the camera to pick up in real life. There's a lot of shimmer on here versus mica. I'm going to talk about that. Um, so they're, and they're also water reactive. So as Tracy's spraying hers, you'll see she can mix and match her colors. She can um, dilute them by adding more water. You can make the water spots, which is one of the things I did here. I took, after these dried, I took uh, regular water and then lifted it with a paper towel. So, um, and yes, even on my homemade ones, and I'll tell you my homemade formula here in a second, but I want to tell you these colors. We'll go through these swatches real quick. So these reds are Dilutions Red Post Box. So this is Dilutions Shimmer Spray Post Box Red. Okay, so there's a lot of mica in there. It's very pretty. The one in the middle is Tattered Angels Red Velvet. And the one on the end is Shimmering Bliss Dragon's Blood. So you can also see how there's a different spray pattern I had on the Tattered Angels. And this is just cheapy watercolor paper, by the way. And I can also see the difference in the micas, the different micas. So we're gonna talk about that um, as well. In the orange category, and I think this one gave me the best representation of the micas. So I'm gonna talk about that. In this category, we have four colors here. So you can see the first color and the mic is here. Here's the second one, the third, and the fourth. And this one gave me the best representation of each spray. So I'm going to talk about it. This is the new Tim Holtz mica. So the Tim Holtz mica stains have the highest concentration of mica, in my opinion. So it gives you straight up mica, okay, which is okay if you like a lot of mica, and I'm sure there are a lot of projects where you wish there was more mica, but it's straight, it had the highest concentration of full mica, okay? The one next to it is the sister company, or the sister brand, which is Dilutions Shimmer Splay, which also had a lot of mica, but not as much as Tim Holtz. So you can see where the light hits it, how much that mica is sitting there, but then eventually the mica kind of trails off where this is still a full blanket of mica. So you get some nice concentration of colors, but there's way more mica in the Tim Holtz versus the Dilutions. The one in the middle is the Shimmering Bliss. Shimmering Bliss has something different in their sprays. I don't know what she puts in there, but I'm telling you, this is not just mica. There is mica and glitter in here. So that's the one that has that almost diamond look to it. Um, so there is mica, you can see the mica, but there's an extra little sparkle in the Shimmering Bliss. It's just the, the prettiest one is all I could say. It's just very light. You definitely have the color, you have the mica, and there's another thing in there, which is a little bit of a, a glitter almost. And then the last one is the Tattered Angels ones. And I think the Tattered Angels for me was the lightest in terms of color saturation and in mica. Um, still very pretty. You can still see the, the mica in there. I mean, there's mica all over this. Now, in terms of transfer or fallout, I would say almost all of them had some kind of a fallout. Um, see, they all have it. The Shimmering Bliss definitely had a little more fallout than the others, but they all, to me, had some kind of a fallout. You can, if that bothers you, spray your project down with some Krylon spray, which is what I use on my pan pastels. So all of them, in some way, had some kind of a fallout for me, even the homemade ones. And yes, I did add gum Arabic. Um, so the only, the only thing I would say that really would sway me one way or another towards a company is color choice. Really, it was just color choice. Um, I, I wasn't keen on buying distressed micas and spending $12 on something I thought I already had. So 
but I do see the high concentration of mica in these. And I'm sure that they serve a purpose, but being limited edition and being the most expensive, I mean, these are $4 a bottle for one ounce. It's up to you. Do you want those limited edition colors? If you're a Tim Holtz junkie, you got to have them. I get that. I understand full set syndrome. The, um, I went to my Joann's, they were sold out. I'm assuming you'd be able to purchase these online still, but there are only six colors not including the original. So they are limited edition. If you like that full on mica, that's where you get those. These dilutions come in a very close second, but her colors are vibrant, bright, um, very luscious colors. So they're not muted. And you know, you know the difference between distress colors and dilutions colors, right? The color palette is a little different more jewel toned in these. And then the shimmering bliss is somewhere kind of in the middle. Shimmering bliss, you have a lot of 25 colors to choose from. Tattered angels, I think you have way more than that. So it's just a matter of choosing colors. And then of course the option to make your own. And like I said, there are other companies like Nuvo, which makes a spray, which just didn't get here in time. They wanna know what, what you're swatching out there. I think Tracy's swatching out all the new micas. Yeah, these are the Tim Holtz micas and I just swatched them out on some black. Um, to see just how, you know, what changes about them if you do them on black and they look pretty cool. So I'll be curious to see how the others measure up on black as well. Yeah, and I made yeah. a mess. Look at this beautiful brown with the berry, the purple though, that's so pretty. But yeah, I can't judge until mixing. they're dry. Right, right. So, so here I went into like the off. yellows or golds. And here you can see dilutions had a pretty, almost an orangey color, but it had this beautiful gold mica in there. This one is Tattered Angels. This one is Distress. And this one is Shimmering Bliss. Look at all of that shimmer in the Shimmering Bliss. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was giving the mica a run for its money. Look at the Shimmering Bliss. That is full on shimmer. And then right next to it is the Tim Holtz. So I'm telling you, in my personal opinion, I just liked how the shimmering bliss sparkles. That's the best way I can say it. It's a really sparkly, pretty spray. Uh, yes, Jim, you can do them on craft. You don't want to go too heavy unless it's heavy craft because it's going to, um, you know, kind of buckle on you. And I don't, I don't recommend drying those with the, with your heat tool. It might be okay. But again, with the disclaimer that I gave earlier about mica. It might blow the tiny particles around and, and maybe maybe harm you. I, I don't know, but just stay safe and don't do that. All right, this one is a trick. It's a very it's a trick panel. So I used Technique Junkies Miami. Shimmering Bliss in Miami. You can see how pretty that is. So I started with that. Then I said, what is the difference between the Distress Spray Stain without glitter and Shimmer Spray, Dilutions? Well, you guys, they're pretty much the exact same color. You can see here, they all work well together. So I have this nice, beautiful ombre panel. I have this light Shimmering Bliss Shimmer at the top. You can see there, she named them appropriately by calling them Shimmering Bliss and not Mica Sprays. Because I'm telling you, she has some kind of a secret ingredient in here. That is not mica in there. You see the difference? And then here is the mica spray. Do you see the difference of how much heavier that mica is? But I put all three. These two are the same color. One has mica, one doesn't. <laughs> I'm going to grab a piece of crap here so Jim can see them. Good on idea. And then I'll do the shimmering bliss. I, I don't only have five that show up. I have the iridescent as well. So let's yeah. go on crap. Okay, this is the Tulian pink we got from Shimmering Bliss Technique Junkies. If you did stamp with me, um, you got that color. The one in the middle is Tattered Angels Plum, which you can see is much darker purple. And again, you can see the difference in how it sprays. The Tattered Angels were more distressed looking sprays or had more drops where it was smoother with the other sprays. And this is Nancy's Make Your Own Formula, which I call everything purple. 
And it literally is everything purple. So you guys are going to ask me, okay, Nance, what did you put in there? So in a price comparison, there's a couple different things you can do in a price comparison. You have to talk about what products you have to purchase. So you have to purchase some kind of a spray bottle, right? So price value spray bottle wise, and you're going to want to test the, these out. The Ranger Mister, which I have purchased at stamp shows is around three bucks, okay? So this is a two ounce bottle. So I have one of those that I've already made. You can also go to the travel section of your local Walmart, big box, Target stores, and you can buy these bottles and you can go to the dollar store and you can buy like three of them for a couple of dollars. So I've used those to make some sprays. You can use the mini misters. These are the ones I'm not going to advise for mica because they are so fine. These clogged and you don't get a lot of color. It's great if you need a quick in a pinch color to match a project. For but, that to dry. In, but in terms of long term, you don't get a lot of product in here. They're very small and the mica does not like these. So I'm going to say if you're going to make these, you're better off with some kind of a spray bottle. And the other option is I found some uh, Target and you can see I labeled this one, everything purple. And there you can see all the mica in the bottom. And as you swirl or roll or store them on their side, that mica will kind of just move along its way. So when I made them, Obviously water, I would say your best bet is probably to use distilled water if you can get it, if you have it, because distilled water is going to minimize your chance of your sprays getting contaminated and getting moldy if you're not going to use them for a long period of time. I did just use regular sink water, but if you want to do this and make a whole batch of them, I'm going to say distilled water is probably your best bet. Um, and then... You need some kind of colorant or pigment. And I did use, like Tracy said, I tried to use reinkers. And the issue I had with reinkers, and I love my reinkers, and I did use some assignments, some in Catherine Pooler, is that the reinkers. Um, you lose the ability to become water reactive. And Tracy, jump in and tell me if you had the same issues or not. So you, you lose some of the ability to become water reactive because you're basically taking that reinker and diluting it. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're already making it react with water. So there's only so much it will react with water. The other thing was vibrancy of color. So I lost a lot of my color. I had, I, what did I say the one time I added 80 drops of reinker? Yeah, uh, so I um, got these cheap watercolors. And wait till you see what I got from them. And those and other things. <laughs> yeah, those and other things. So I would say your best bet, if you're going to add a pigment, and this is just the coloring portion, we're not even talking about the shimmer portion yet. This is just to make colored sprays, is to use something highly pigmented. So watercolors like Tracy said. So we have brush show crystals. She used actual um, watercolor paints because that's what they are is they're concentrated colors. These worked really good. These are the uh, color sparks because they're already so mm -hmm. vibrant and so dark. Um, what's the other company color? The one against brush shows that I don't have yet. Um, oh, somebody help me The out. Ken Oliver? Ken Oliver, yes, yes, yes. These, by the way, are my, um, these are my technique junkies. This is Dragon's Blood. Um, this one is, I love this one, Just Squeezed. And this one is the Tulian Pink. This one is the Smoldering Ash. The other ones I have are basically for going over other things, you wouldn't be able to see anything but the sprinkle or sparkle of it. So I'm gonna set these aside to dry. Okay. Um, another company that I like that I was really surprised with, which shouldn't have been, 
How many of you guys have these primary elements? I've had these for years. <laughs> I just bought some more. Um, these are great artist pigments that they use in paint pouring. They use them in mixing acrylic paints. Um, they use them in mixed media art, but they have little shaker bottles. They have little pots, but these are highly concentrated pigment powders and they have the mica included. And they, these were my secret sauce. These were my secret ingredients, but I will <laughs> say these are not cheap. They are very expensive, um, but these all in one miracle treatment here. So I took a little bit of everything and in terms of shimmer, I added some Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powder, which has some color. I didn't think the color was dark enough, but I wanted the shimmer. And of course I added the Arteza Micas. As you guys know, I have this big old tray of Arteza Micas, Arteza, Arteza, whatever. whatever. And yes, I added gum Arabic. Yeah, I did too. Didn't make a difference. At least not on mine. I, I maybe didn't have enough. So I'm right now going I, in with I my added, homemade. I would say almost, almost equal parts of pigment to the gum Arabic. And I mixed it into a paste before I mm. put it in my bottle. Yeah, I have a plan to mix some here during this live. That's my red. Still after that magic sweet spot of red Ooh. already. So that's where Nancy's homemade purple. And it really was everything I shot in, I shot in there. So that's blue. That's purple. Th this one's my favorite color. So of course you guys know, I love yes. my hot pink. This one is Technique Junkies. I think that one's totally in pink again here on this end. Look at the difference it is when you put it with purples versus when you put it with pinks. So I think that's Technique Junkies, totally in pink again. This one this is Diane Delusion's bubblegum pink. Woo! That is a hot, hot pink. Hot, baby. And then I think this one was a Tattered Angels. Um, just uh, a, a note here why I was saying these, uh, these uh, shakers are from the dollar store. So it's two for a dollar. And this, they just don't spray properly out the gate okay you can see it just is a mess when you spray it so you have to spray a lot more product okay good to know good to know i've had pretty good luck with the the misters but i know they're kind of expensive um the uh target brand one was doing okay for me and then i think i think i picked these up in target as well but they were in a different part of the store and i think there was three in there I can't remember. All right, now I want to show you guys these blacks because black, I guess there's a lot of different ways to see the saturation, the different intensity of black. So this one here, it looks like straight up gunmetal. Okay, you got it. That's the Tim Holtz. I mean, it literally looks like I painted acrylic paint across there. That is a distress stain mica in empty tomb. Okay. This one, which was the blackest of black, is the Dilusions Black Marble. This one sprayed out of the bottle this way. You want to talk about Nancy digging old stuff out of the cabinet. This is Inca Dinka Do spray ink. I didn't even know this had shimmer in it because I couldn't see through the bottle. Well, it turns out the bottle's black. <laughs> and it has a shimmer iridescent. So it literally sprayed in these circles and there's sim silver in here and I can feel it. It's raised. You can see there's some fallout there. And that's what I use to spray these bats. So that's why the bats have a little bit of black and a little bit of shimmer in them, which was cool. But I was like, that's sprayed weird. And then this last one, I think was a Tattered Angels one, which again, you can see is a little more muted and it had like a gold mica fleck in it. You can see the gold in that. So you wanna swatch out your sprays and see how they look and how they kind of play well with each other. 
This one was Nancy's pumpkin spice orange. So I made my own. And oh, no, don't, start. <laughs> don't get me started with the pumpkin spice orange, but I love it. It's like a blood <laughs> orange color. Look how pretty that came out with my own micas. And then this is that bubblegum pink from Dilutions. But look at how nice they play together. They do. And these are the two Dilutions that I have that I, I think I think I added mica to them. Maybe I forgot to. I meant to anyway. Those are my handmade. Now, let me tell you about the black, okay? So it is sparkly, but, you know, I just couldn't get it black enough so I added some acrylic paint and that doesn't work so just a side note <laughs> it just comes out thick and globby right and you need them to be kind of light and airy so that the mica can can poke through okay these are <sighs> all my homemade ones and this one I actually added purple mica in the blue um stain i'm going to set those aside for drying and i'll show i'll show everything after it's kind of dry okay so we talked about uh, making backgrounds that it's water reactive i'm going to show you guys a water re uh, resist and you can also use it as a water color remember they're straight up pigments they're basically water colors but they're in a spray bottle so you can take a paintbrush, spray a little bit on your mat. So I have some more samples here. Sweaty glove hands. I, I put mine on so you can take yours off and take a rest. <laughs> So here I colored some texture paste. So if you have any kind of matte texture paste, I have the uh, Ranger texture paste. I have some of the, here's the stress texture paste. You, all I did here is I put some paste down, sprayed some color down. And I believe this is Technique Junkies I sprayed on here. And it colored my texture paste. So my texture paste is colored. You have some sprayed backgrounds. This would be a cool mixed media kind of background. But here, can you guys see, I took the clear texture paste, what we've been using for foiling, the glossy texture paste. Can you see that I stenciled that through here on this green panel? So I'm gonna show you how you can use it um, with a resist. I'm using the my homemade stencil that I made from, um, what do I call that stuff? No, I can't remember what I call Contact it. Contact paper? Transfer tape. Transfer paper that you use for your Cricut. Mm -hmm. So I just die cut it. And I'm putting this grave, is this, the, yeah, this is the grave texture paste that um, is part of that release. Okay. What I like about using the transfer tape is I can just throw it away. I don't have to run and wash it. Or I can wash it, but then it won't stick anymore. I'm going to mix a couple of different blues here. So I have Nancy's homemade blue. I haven't named this one yet. I have shimmering bliss lapis lazuli, which is a dark sapphire navy blue and then i don't think i have any of the micas or the dilutions in blue so they won't be playing on this round yeah so that doesn't work out well at least not on this paper tracy schultz says stencils and sprays are a match made in heaven yes absolutely so yeah, making backgrounds water reaction, bad idea guys watercolor uh-oh didn't Good work, work. No, it sticks too hard to the, at too least sticky. to that silver. Yeah. Okay. No Ribbon problem. Burlap canvas, embossing folders. We're going to talk about that. Stencils you're showing. Die cuts. How about um, wood? You said you sprayed on wood and we canvas burlap. Yep. We've done canvas. We've done burlap. <clears throat> we've done ribbon. Actually, we've done gauze. 
think I had, yeah, I have a sample piece of wood here to test it on. Oh, ideas, ideas, ideas. Here, let me test it on the wood here. Let's go, let's try it. Let's go a purple showdown, even though this is really pink. Let the purple one go right here. And then we'll do my homemade purple. All right, here we go. See, I just homemade blue. See there, it's almost like a dark blue jean color. And this is really cheapy watercolor paper. This is from um, Hobby Lobby. It's a watercolor pad. And now I'm going to bring in this Shimmering Bliss in Lapis Lazuli. And again, we have 25 colors of Technique Junkie Shimmering Bliss. Look at how much finer that sprays out. And you can always dry and layer your colors. You want it to be darker, put more on there. You want it to be lighter, hey, no problem. Oh, I think that's too dark. I'm unhappy with that now. Where is my spray bottle? Real simple. Shifting. Yes, shifting paints. You can see how it's water reactive. It will move, it will mix. I can do it wet, I can do it dry. Let this dry. Take my paper towel and kind of dab it and move it around. Get a normal stencil out here. I think I oversaturated mine. I'm going to dry this a little bit. over my trash can with my pixie spray. Oh, so, somebody mentioned shifting paint and um, I love that stuff. The way that it looks, I, I don't personally have any yet. That stencil, and I'm not gonna do this whole stencil, I'll just do part of it. We'll do, let's do Rangers. I want translucent. Transparent matte. Guys, I'll be right back. I gotta go wash my stencil. I don't have a lasagna pan. All right, that's mostly dry. I saw Carly said, does the cheap watercolor um, paper not warp or at least warp. Um, all watercolor paper will warp when you add moisture to it. The trick is how you dry it. So if you find that your paper is curling too much like this, like in the middle, you need to just change where you're drying it. That's why you could see me constantly moving my heat tool, also flipping it over and spraying the back. So what's happening is as the moisture is being 
depleted, it's starting to tighten and curl up on itself. Another thing you can do is take plain water and spray the area again and re-dry it. So by spraying it, you're loosening the fibers of the paper and they start to relax. And then you can go back in and dry them. But if you concentrate your heat on one area too long, then that's when you get the warping. Everything warps. You can see this is warped, but it's not as bad. And all you do is just re-moisture, re-spray it, add that moisture back in, and then re-dry it, and you'll get less warping. So this is still a little wet on the corners, but I'm not too worried about it. But I want to show you that beautiful resist. So we have green leaves. I did a couple different green sprays there, and then I sprayed over it in the blue. But you can see that the spray is, is it's, it's, it's resisted, right, because it's a water-based product. Yet we still have all of this shimmer and I used my homemade and I used the shimmering bliss. So two different kinds of shimmer in there because I made my own and I used a different one. So it gives it a lot of different looks there. So a lot of fun with that. Um, Jerry, no, that's not. It's, that is a stencil I think I bought at Hobby Lobby or something before I knew I should label my things. <laughs> um, Tracy, can you put your Shimmering Bliss uh, link? I know Tracy has a discount code. So if you guys are interested in the Shimmering Bliss, these I, I swatched out a while ago when we did our little, um, our little show with Shimmering Bliss and that way so you can see the different colors and you can do an embossing folder before or after you spray which is cool it's up to you so this one i did the embossing folder i think before and then sprayed it afterwards you get a little bit of a different look if you do it before then it's a little more even if you do it after it's more of a distressed look so these are some of the shimmering bliss colors i have this one i believe is dragon's blood i don't have all their names in front of me um but they i only have a few of them That's Harvest Gold, I know that. And then this is Vivid Volt, which is a nice lime green color. This is Olive Olivine Gold, which we used on Stamp Wars. Um, I think this is Miami. This is that Lazuli I just used. Here's Thule in Pink. And then this one is Chestnut Mare, I think. Hey, for not knowing the colors, I knew some of them. I didn't mm -hmm. let my dry, but that's okay. We'll just let it all dry together. So speaking of embossing folders, I wanted to show you guys, if you are trying to get this kind of faux metal look, there's a couple ways you can do it. One is to obviously use some kind of metallic foil paper. So this is a satin finished metallic paper. I use the same Tim Holtz folder on all three of these. So this is already foil card. Hey, look, great. Okay. I can scratch this up, distress it, put some black paint on it, and it'll look like distressed metal. This is the Tim Holtz foil card. You can see it has craft on the back. So you can do the same thing with that. This one is doing direct to paper. So if you've never done direct to paper with micas all you do is you take your versamark ink powder your embossing sticky ink clear pad and i swipe the whole paper with it i'll just show you here and you stamp it on you swipe it on you do whatever you need to do and then you either take your perfect pearls or your micas whatever you have let me see here let's do let's do this nice hot pink oh i should probably grab a and you can either um swipe it on there I like using a brush just so I can get even coverage and it will stick to it. And perfect pearls work great. Uh, Pearl X works pretty much the same way because these are just straight micas. By the way, the Arteza ones are cosmetic grade. So there's no like special binders in here um, because they're cosmetic grade. They're made for soaps, candles, makeups, eyeshadows, and things like that. 
you have to check for that because some of the ones online, I know T bought some online. I think those were made for art projects and resin projects. Mm -hmm. so they, they might have a resin in them. And if they have a resin in them, like perfect pearls has a resin in them. You definitely need to wear a mask with those because of the resin particles. Um, what you would do is you just go in and you keep adding this on. If I need to go back and dip this in some more, I can do that until I get my coating and it'll have this faux metallic look to it. And guys, I'm about to attempt to make a red again. So <laughs> I'm kind of going for this shade dish. Hey, Regina. Thanks for joining us. 68 folks watching. Please make sure you head on over to Not Afraid of Color and follow Tracy. We want to get her to 1,000 viewers. I'm going to start with Orchid Mica Powder. And y'all, this I got a 50 pack of these, and I've shown them on my channel before. For what did I say, Nancy? Fifteen or twenty dollars? Yeah, you broke it down to like forty cents a packet. I think you said. Yeah. And I'm putting a lot in here, y'all. All right, so there you can see my my metallic mica covered thing. And then at this point, I would spray it with some Krylon spray, and then run it through my embossing folder. And then that's when you get this. Okay. And if you want to use your sprays, you can. I did use the distress, it's a brand new distress sprays on this. You can still, you can see some of the spray marks in there, but you still get that kind of faux metal look. Okay. I've got Simon Hurley's Game Over. Wow, my admins aren't saying hi to each other. Jeez, you guys, this vacation thing is hitting you hard. <laughs> I'm gonna add some brilliant red brusho. Yep, just adding all the colors until I get the red I want. I think that's the thing I took away from this is the fun of being, you know, a scientist and experimenting with well, can I do this? And can I do that? And, you know, if you, if you're not that kind of person and you just want to buy sprays, that's okay. Yep. <laughs> if you're like me and you're cheap and you're like, uh, I don't want to spend the money when I already have all the stuff to make it. That's okay. If you want something that's full mica, you want to buy the Tim Holtz, just, you know, like Tim Holtz can do no wrong and you want to buy Tim Holtz products. That's okay. Um, if you want to just add variety to your projects and you only want a few colors, you could do that. I know, you know, then I would say if you only have one spray in your arsenal of art, at least get a clear because when you have a clear, you can add shimmer to anything. I mean, any of us can make a regular background. You can make a regular sprayed background. You can make an ink smushing background. You can make any kind of background, but Having that clear spray, and there's quite a few companies, there's Sheer Shimmer, Sparkle, Spritz. Here's one that Hero Arts sent me in one of their club kits. I don't know what it's called. Um, one from, I do have the one from Shimmering Bliss has two of them. This one's Dazzle, which is more of the glitter one. There's one that's pearlescent and one that's glitter. So if you only buy one, get yourself a clear. That's what I would say. Okay, mask can come off now. Lord knows, don't want to have to wear those at home. They talk oh, about looking, it's awesome. looking pretty bloody there. She's going for the blood, you guys. Going for the blood, yep. So I think the only things we didn't talk about were, oh, ink smushing and gel press. Let me clean my dirty Versamark pad before Tracy makes fun of me. <laughs> I made her throw hers out when I went to her house. See what's going to happen though. Once I add water, that's going to lose a lot of that concentration. 
Okay, got a little empty bottle here. Good luck. Got a little itty bitty funnel. Iridescent is the other one from Technique Junkies. Thank you. I added um, almost, I would put three quarters of gum Arabic to each pigment powder because the Arteza, again, because it's cosmetic grade, it really doesn't have a fixative or a binder in it. So I added a lot of gum Arabic. Now I still had some fallout, um, but it really wasn't as bad as previous times when I made it without the gum Arabic. You know, I've got a bottle of red. I'm going to drop it and spill it everywhere. It's just, just me. <laughs> what happened, PJB? I missed it. What'd she say? Sheer shimmer sparkle spritz. Sheer shimmer sparkle spritz. Say that five times. <laughs> no. Uh, let me pull one of these out and color it. Thank you to whoever threw these in my giveaway box because these have come in handy. Um, Pink brush here, a little bucket of water. Sheer shimmer sparkle spritch. Hi, Margaret. Okay, I got the lid on. All right, let's see what's the final result here. Let's do I lost bit. my swatch papers. We can do ink smushing. Oh yeah, that's true. Let's just smush this bad boy. Too pink. It's not bloody. Oh, see, I like pink. I'm going in with pink too. <laughs> the ink smushing is pretty. Yeah, I'm going to have red hands tomorrow because I gave up on my gloves. Definitely if your hands on junk journal, mixed media type person, you know, but even if you're not, if you're someone like me, where it's like, no, I don't feel like getting dirty today. There are different techniques you can incorporate. So that doesn't happen here. I mixed two different pinks and they came out with like a fuchsia pink, which was pretty cool. And I can leave it that way. Or I can say, Hey, that's not pink enough. Let me add some more. <laughs> and then I add some more on there. I mean, if you're thinking about Christmas, and that's what I'm thinking about, because I, the one trick that I used with the red is put golden. I used to do stained glass um, a million years ago, and whenever you would go to purchase glass, the red glass was double the cost of other any other color, red, red or yellow, because it had gold in it. And so, I decided that in in order to get that red that I'm looking for, I'm going to need some gold in there. Where is my water spread? Okay. And watercolor. So I'm just going to take a paintbrush and do a little. Good idea. Wash. I'll try it. What is she saying? She said maybe add a little brown. I did add some sienna, but I probably need more. No, you need to add some purple. <laughs> Well, yeah, let me try another drop of this rusty hinge. This stuff comes out really fast, by the way. The re-inker for um, the Tim Holtz inks. Oh, and God, it's leaking everywhere too. Nice, way to go. So, ink smushing, oh, let me grab my little gel press out and see what we can do with that. Someone had a question in the group about using ink on her gel press and she was getting spots. It wasn't smooth coverage. Well, you're going to have that with ink, which is why most people <laughs> use paint with their gel press. I found that if you add, um, if you like douse it down with Versamark first, it That's does make things stick better. Say. Yep. Can't find mine. Your gel press? Got it. 
Okay. I got it. Did you guys know, this is off subject, but gel press, um, these, this is a woman owned company and they come in these clam shells and they come with these two clear pieces of plastic, right? They come sandwiched in these two clear pieces of plastic. Um, you're supposed to throw one of them away because what will happen is the impression, if you have any air bubbles, as you can see here, See the air bubble, see that little mark there? Air bubble will impress this. So you only need the clamshell or if you wanna buy some kind of storage tin for it, you can. But these are just for packaging. You can literally use them for acetate, throw them out, do ink smushing, but you do not have to sandwich these back in or you get those marks on there. Um, obviously you don't wanna use heat tools around these because they are made with some flammable things, but they're long lasting, non-molding, reusable printing plates. Um, so many different things we've shown that you guys can do with them, but I'm gonna slap some Versamark on mine. And all the Versamark does is this is a glycerin. So it's a clear sticky ink and it's gonna fill in any porous surfaces on that gel plate. And I'll go with some different blues. Mary says, even when she uses her powder backgrounds, her hands are just as gross. Yes, got to start wearing gloves. Gloves, gloves, gloves. And I have my nonstick mat down because it's just easier to wipe everything up. Paper towels are everywhere. And you guys, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I have my FSC apron on as well. Oh, sorry. It's so cute. This one is uh, Shimmering Bliss, my advice. Shimmering Bliss, I keep reaching for because I like the, 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 I don't want to call it glitter because it's not glitter. It's the glistening of this spray. It's not just mica. Let me spray a little bit on there so you can see it beads up a little bit. And then, uh, but let's mix and match it. So let's add in some Dilutions Calypso Teal. Tracy Fear we added as our admin team because of her naturally artistic ability. So um, obviously we needed another admin on our channel because we lost a couple people, which is fine. Um, but we made sure that um, we wanted someone that was different from our styles, but also, um, how can I say this? not invested in trying to sell or push anything and more invested in the artistic ability of it and had natural artistic talent. And Tracy filled in all those boxes for us because she's, she's very artistic, very mixed media. And Tracy's involved in a lot of crafts. Tracy, tell them some other things you did in the past. You did crocheting. What else did you do? Yeah, so I've done lots of crochet, lots of quilts, I've done stained glass, I've done beading, I've done sculpture. Um, I am a Jill of all trades, a master of none. <laughs> I like how you put that. But also, you know, because Tracy was had all this background of artistic ability, but she didn't really have we, a YouTube channel. So we kept pushing her. You have a blog though. Do you want to talk about your blog? I ignore my blog. <laughs> she ignores her blog, but she had all this artistic talent and was kind of hiding in the background. And so we really like, we're pushing her, pushing her to get the YouTube channel. And now she's reached over 500 with her YouTube channel channel. So quite a milestone, but I like the fact that she is so different from Chow. Um, the other Tracy, myself, and Stacy. And if you notice when you're watching her videos, she gives you guys a lot of different techniques and ways of doing things for a lot of different budgets. Sometimes she'll bring in some homemade stuff like we're doing here. And sometimes she'll say, hey, I went and bought these from the dollar store. Or I bought these at the latest craft store. I saw these online. 
So she's just like us when it comes to um, that part. Cause some of us, yeah, I get it are on a budget. And some of you guys are like, what budget? I can have whatever I want. <laughs> it's cool. Right. So we <laughs> wanted to make sure we answered all of those questions in different ways and different techniques. And I don't do a whole bunch of mixed media. I don't like getting my hands dirty. Tracy hates wearing gloves. She loves getting her hands stained and dirty. <laughs> so uh, adding her was just a perfect fit for our team. And we're glad to have her. Shucks. Thank you. You're don't you love, I love this actually flickering, flickering candle next to my homemade red, which has a whole lot of stuff in it. Look at this. It almost looks like the moon. Oh, that's so cool. It even has a crater. See, this is what happens when you leave that plastic on your gel press. That plastic oh, that left it cool. in. But it looks like the moon. Now I want to do one in like grays. Like I want, oh, I could do it again. And oh. it's got shimmer on it. Gives me an idea there. I have one of these. Get a twofer. All right, what do I have for grays? I haven't even used this one. You know, I have an original Distress Mica spray that I haven't brought out yet. Brush Pewter. Let's bring that in with Mica Stain Empty Tomb. Daisy said tonight is a full blue moon too. I did not know that. Oh, no wonder terrible day yesterday. <laughs> What's going to happen? Are you having fun? Are you learning on the things you can do? And by the way, I know I said mica sprays, but it's any sprays. So if you have any sprays in your batch I try to keep all mine together so I mix them up it doesn't matter to me what brand they are because like I said now I'm looking at the colors and saying well I don't have that color I don't have that color and I I keep all of mine in a bucket and so they all are together <laughs> I wasn't crazy about that I the lift idea didn't work yes Carly I did a little bit of VersaFine Claire ink first so that my gel press would accept the spray ink. If you want a more modeled effect, you would spray more water on there and not let it set. I let it sit and let all of that soak in there. And I did three different colors. I did um, Technique Junkies Lapis Lazuli plus Technique Junkies Miami Vice plus Dilusions whatever that teal is. And I did all three and just kind of let them blend. And it just looks so cool. Looks like the moon. I'm going to do it again in gray here. So I'm going to use the, yeah. Set this somewhere to dry. And if you guys want to purchase any um, of these sprays, you can use uh, my Ranger link to get the new Distress Micas. You can or the Dilutions. Um, you can get them there. Uh, Scrapbook.com has them. You can also use Tracy's link for uh, Technique Junkies. Uh, and you got a 10% off coupon at Technique Junkies. And I, I do like, I will say the Technique Junkie ones, I don't feel like I'm wasting them because... If I have two ounces of this versus one ounce of this, I'm going to spray the heck out of this one. Because to me, yes. there's a lot more in there. Yes, ma'am. Right? Versus kind of hoarding the little bottle, right? Plus with 25 colors. And I know that if you, if you add up all of the illusions and all the micas, you can get that. And if you have tattered angels in your cabinet, Bernie was on the other day saying, oh my gosh, I forgot how much fun these are. Go pull them out of the closet. What do I always say to you guys? Use what you have. Or make your own, which is what we did. It's so cheap to make your own. This came out pretty cool on the black. Let me see if the craft is dry. It's almost dry. Jim, if you're still here, here's the craft. Hey, Jim. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> It's a little gray gray on there. 
That so. almost looks like blood on the craft. They said that. They said it looks like blood. So if you're going to be spraying that on your cheesecloth gauze, yeah, you're going to have your mummy no problem. Oops, blood, mummy. <laughs> bloodshot victim, whatever you're going for there. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, all right, let's look at water react on the black. Yay, That's Carly. Carly says, I'm playing with you, Nancy. I'm using them, not hoarding them. Great. T, they, they want you to hold it. T, they want you to hold them up closer to the camera, please. Here's the black. That would make a great galaxy. Yeah, wouldn't it? I, I am so behind that I can't see what I'm showing you when I'm looking on YouTube. You can see that? Everybody see that okay? There I am. Okay. Tracy, look at mine. I have to wait until you're done. <laughs> wait until I catch up with you. Let me see if I can refresh here. No, there's always a lag because you hear me through Zoom before it goes up on the screen. There's a uh, few seconds. Oh, lag. look at that. Oh my gosh. And the mica just kind of sat and spidered and it looks like craters of the moon. What a happy little accident. Yeah, but that's um, honestly um, that I was watching the Tim Holtz live yesterday while well, I watched the replay and they've got this little uh, mass stencil situation. It looks just like that. Yeah. Jim said, cool. Thanks, Jim. Um, I'm going to recap some of the things that we've done. And if anybody else has any suggestions or comments or questions, shoot them at us. I am going to make a color. So we are going to do that together. So I will show you guys my little recipe here. So we have making backgrounds and you can stamp on the background, stencil the backgrounds, paint on the backgrounds, heat emboss over the backgrounds. Um, we have that they are water reactive. So that just means once you have done a panel, you can always go back and add water um, to dilute it, to use the water to kind of mix them a little bit. You can do the, what do they call that? The, the, the ink when you lift the water lifting technique. Um, you can use them with a resist. So either through heat embossing or like I did using the texture paste, you can use them as a resist. Um, you can watercolor with them. So basically you can, so I'm going to throw this out. I don't want to put that in my clamshell here. Um, you can use a paintbrush and watercolor with them. You can tint texture paste with them. You can spray chipboard, ribbon, burlap, wood, canvas. Um, you can find resist projects. If people sell watercolor resist uh, coloring books and things like that. You can spray those. Uh, you can use them before or after embossing folders. You can use them with stencils and also masks. Uh, you can spray die cuts or once you have already, so two ways of doing that as well. You can cut these into die cuts or if you've already cut your die cut, you can spray your die cut. You can use them for ink smushing. And my favorite so far is using them with the gel press. So a lot of fun going on here. I hope I didn't miss any other samples here. This was just the, um, basically the offset of the globby red thing I had there, which I can't find now. Where'd it go? Oh. Here's your wood. Time is it? Okay. Remind me when it's eight o'clock because a little girl needs to go home. Okay, so I have a piece of wood grain cardstock here I wanted to spray for you guys, and then we'll make a spray. Okay, so this is a piece of wood grain cardstock. 
I want to say, I think it's LCI. I'm not positive, you guys. Can't really see it though, right? I'm going to go off to the side and dry this a little bit. This is Technique Junkies Chestnut Mare. I think it's the only brown one I have, you guys. Oh, no, you know what? I do have a uh, Technique Junkies one. I mean, a uh, powdered lace one. There we go. Creme de chocolate. Sure, Jim, no problem. I use sprays with stencils, but they aren't crisp, seem to leak even with pixie spray. So pixie spray, there is a secret to using pixie spray and the secret is use a lot, okay? So with pixie spray, you have to be really generous with it. You have to, I use, I spray mine in my box as well and you have to let it dry for a minute, two minutes, okay? If you take your pixie spray while it's wet and try to stick your stencil to paper, it will not stick fully. It has to be a dry product, kind of like rubber cement. You guys remember when we were kids and you had to use rubber cement, you sprayed, you pasted one piece of paper and another piece of paper, but you had to wait for them to fully be dry before you could stick them together. So it's the same thing with pixie spray. Pixie spray, you spray on your stencils. You have to let the stencil sit for a minute to two minutes before it gets tacky. Then you're going to press that down onto your paper. Also making sure you have smooth paper smoother better when you have a textured paper like this and that's why i recommend a thicker cardstock like watercolor cardstock or heavier cardstock um, you'll have better saturation of that uh, ink you don't want to oversaturate your sprays if you oversaturate your sprays they will seep under your stencils so light airy wisp up top dry it go back in and layer another layer if you want to if it's too saturated it will go under the stencil and you will get running of your colors. Yes, Tattered Angels is very um, nostalgic to me as well. But here you can see I sprayed that wood grain. I can go in and add more color. I can uh, rub it in to make it more woodsy looking. I can add a little bit of, let's do this. So I'm gonna spray a little bit of this black over here on the side, just a little bit. I'm gonna take my paper towel, which has already got color, dab that up and then just kind of rub it in. Look at how that tree, that wood grain just came to life with just rubbing that in. Look at that. Now you can see it, right? Cool, huh? That'd be good for a little fairy, fairy, fairy step, little toad stool and a little um, gnome door or something on there. All right, now you guys wanna see how to make the sprays. Let me show you that. What else you got, Tracy? Show them. So this is the, we were talking about moon um, masks and stencils. This is the Spellbinder set. Pretty pretty cool set. It comes with five different yep. layers. I got a link for them. I thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> did you Plus guys see my mask. Frankenstein? that went up it's not frankenstein it's frankenstein's monster i get it but he is so stinking cute look at him look at his google eyes and then the little witchy fun 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 all right so you're gonna take your bottle whatever you're going to use and like Tracy said, you get what you pay for. These Ranger ones are a little bit more expensive, but I think they're pretty reliable. You're going to pour your water in. I'm just over here drying my handmade, uh, my handmade swatches. Most of them are dry. But one of them. I hear a doggy. There's a doggy. Hi, doggy. Did you miss me? They must have ran away from the girls. Go tell the girls it's time to go home. Go tell them. Go on, boy. Go tell her. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to put my bottle aside for a second as we do some mixing. 
Now, I have found, and I think I'm going to do a pink because I need a pink that's not so bubblegum pink, right? Or green. I said I needed a green. We're going to do green. What color green are you going to do, Nancy? I, need, I did purple, I did orange, and I did blue, but I need to do a green. And my little spray bottle of green ran out. And I want to do a mossy dark green, not like an olive green. I already have the olive green. So here's what I did. I have this little, like a little container, a little bucket thing. I don't know where I got these. I just bought them. Okay, so this little container, okay. I also have a variety of little like mixing spoons, spatulas, use what you have. Um, and so I gotta grab my, some Arabic, here we go. All right, and this is what I use, the powdered kind. It does come in a liquid. I think the liquid works better. All right, so in here, I'm just going to add a scoop of this. Okay, and it says on the bottle that you should use a four to one ratio. You should use one part gum Arabic to four parts pigment. Um, but I found that um, like 50 50 was the best i don't think that this is enough i'm gonna add two scoops actually two scoops okay okay and now i'm going to add a little bit of water into here and kind of mix this into a paste because if this doesn't dissolve properly, then you don't get the binding element, which is what we want to try to hold our mica or our shimmer powders into place so that we don't have a lot of fallout. And like I said, almost all of mine had some kind of a fallout. There wasn't one that was definitely no fallout, I will say that. Okay, and then this will turn kind of soupy and I just keep mixing it until all of the little lumps are gone. I really want this to be super smooth because again, this is a binder. And if this clumps up in my nozzle, that's a very tiny little area there, I'm gonna have problems spraying. So I wanna make sure that this is very finely mixed up into a nice smooth paste that everything is dissolved in there. Um, and this was, I think the secret because if you didn't do this and you just threw some mica in, you're gonna have fallout, but also you're gonna have clumping and you're gonna have problems when it comes to spraying and you're gonna be frustrated, which we don't want. You can get most no of these supplies. What was that? There is no crying and crafting. Oh yeah, there's no crying. Um, these products you can also pick up on Amazon too, by the way, but most art stores, you'll have gum Arabic in most of your fancy art sections. So you gotta go away from the craft section down to the painting, fine arts, watercolor area that's where you'll find gum Arabic. So what professional artists do is they take their pigments and mix gum Arabic in it to make watercolors and acrylic paints and things like that. Okay, so once I have this nice and smooth and you can see there's no more lumps in there, I'm really going through and making sure that I kind of get all those out of there. So now I have like this kind of syrupy stuff here. Then I'm gonna start to add my pigments it's um, eight o'clock, so you need to walk Natalie home. Take your dog with you. Yeah, when you come back. So I want to add. I wanted to make a deep dark green. So now you're going to add your pigments, and if you want shimmer, totally optional. By the way, you don't have to. I'm going to use this Terra Verde. Let's see what other dark greens do I have. And I just ordered from Color Art. <laughs> You guys, they had a big sale over the weekend. So I was like, oh, ooh, this is perfect. This is olive. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this Terra Verde. I'm gonna add a little bit of this olive primary elements. The primary elements are super concentrated artist pigments. And if you don't have them, here's a little bit of nutmeg. We're gonna add some of that in there. Again, you don't, you use what you have. The color burst and the, um, sparks worked really well but I found that I used less of the primary elements just because they're so concentrated in color brush shows color burst use those kinds of things so then 
at this point, oh, don't spill it. You're going to add your colors until you get what you think is the right shade. Remember, whatever you add is going to be lightened and diluted a little bit once you add your water. So this is a nice bright green. So that's a little bit too blue green for me. I want it to be darker. So I'm gonna add some of this. This one's a shaker top. And you can always go in and, and darken it by adding more pigment or lighten it by adding more water. I did not fill my water bottle up. I went three quarters of the way because if it's too dark and I don't like it, I need to add more water. All right, I need to open this shaker thing. This does stain your hands. Do not do this with any kids around or pets around because if the cat walks across the table right now, you are going to kill it. <laughs> you heard me just tell me yes. She came in at the right moment because I was like, yeah, get out of my face. Um, where's my little other spoon? Now, the more mica you add, the more shimmery it's going to be. Color, arts, primary elements already have pigment and mica. So that was two spoonfuls. That's more than enough. It's going to be way too shimmery and too much color. I'm going to add some of this brown too, just to darken it a little bit. You would do the same thing with your... Um, if you're using reinkers, like I used some Simon reinkers, I used some Catherine Cooler reinkers. I had to use a lot of reinker, like half the bottle, um, depending on how dark and how saturated you want that color. If you want light pastel colors, you don't gotta add that much. But if you want deep saturated colors, you gotta add a lot. So that's it's personal preference. And I was trying to make my own little Halloween set. So I made uh, purple and I made orange, but I did not make a green. Okay, so. And already, you can see that mica start to shimmer in there. And then if you want to add, I have color shift micas from Arteza. Arteza? Arteza? I want those. They're cool. <laughs> you really got to get yourself a set of these. They are cool. Right, so I'm going to add a little bit of this chameleon green, which is like a gold and a green. I'm going to add some of that to this too. You, you make your own, I see Jim said, did you write down your formulas? Nope, just kind of threw stuff together and put, see what it looked like. But this will look like a gold in some shades and oh, do you see the green? Mm-hmm. I haven't even mixed it in yet. That's gonna be cool. Again, I want to make sure everything is fully incorporated. There's no lumps in the bottom. There's no bumps. If it's too thick, I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. Okay. And then I take my spray bottle and I spray my little spoons off so I don't waste any of the mica. And then I will bring this back in. I do have little baby funnels somewhere. I don't know where they're at right now. They're little glitter funnels. I think that's what mine were for. I don't even know. I don't even know where I got them or how, why I have them. I think but I, I got them for glitter funnels because I never use glitter. Somewhere I have little glitter funnels. If you have those, you can use them. Um, but I'm going to add more water into my bowl. And I'm going to add a little bit of time and again, continuously mixing it, making sure that there's no lumps and everything looks well incorporated. If I don't think there's enough mica in there, 
then I'm going to add some more, you know, but you can get a rough idea what your color is going to look like. I'm pretty happy with this. So now I'm going to gently pour this into my bottle. And this is why you want to wear gloves and wear protected surface area. Use a protected surface area. So I still have all this kind of color in there. I don't want to waste that. I'm going to use my spray bottle. My spray bottle just broke on me. What the heck? There we go. Nope, this, this bottle sucks. Okay. I get every last drop of color mica pigment that I can out of here. It looks like a pretty mossy grain there in the bottle. That's what I'm going for. All right. Now I'm going to move all my stuff out of the way here, bring my spray box back in. And again, if you're not the type of person that wants to get their hands dirty and say, forget it, I'll just pay the 12 bucks for the Tim Holtz ones. That's okay. We're not yeah. saying there's a right or wrong. We're just giving you different options here. This is just a gauze bandage. <clears throat> I thought that was genius when I watched your video. I love watching your videos. I learned so much from your video. You make me not afraid of mixed media when I watch your videos. <laughs> cool. That's the best thing to hear. It's all Halloween and I am using the distress mica that's leaking all over. Huh, okay. That's probably my fault. So I was going for a mossy green. I already have an olive green color and I will spray out and we'll compare the different colors too. Okay, now here's something you need to remember too. Once you spray this out and you make any alterations, oh, that's pretty good. You make any alterations to your color. Like if I went back at this point and said, listen, that is not dark enough for me. I'm gonna add more pigment. Anything I do, it's going to be about 15 pumps out of here before the new color comes out. So I do think I want to darken this a little bit. So I'm going to take that out. Yeah, did you take her home? Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to add some more of this color art, dark green. And I forgot that. And I was like adding more ink and more pigment. And I'm like, why is the color not changing? Um, because the color that is in the nozzle right now is what you originally made, right? So keep in mind, if you do any alterations to your color, you need to spray out about 15 pumps before you get to your new color. Don't get frustrated, it just takes some practice. So now I've added that in there and it will dilute pretty quickly now because it's straight in there. I'm going to bring this paper towel back in. So that was our original color because that's what's left in my spray bottle, right? You see how it's slightly getting darker the more I spray it out? And it's just little changes that you do to your pigments to, to make it lighter or darker. If you don't like it that dark, add more water to the formula. If you want it darker, add more of the pigment. And I can see that color shift mic in there, so pretty. So now this is a little bit darker. You see the shimmer? Let me grab a dark piece of paper here. Yeah, you know, I just cleaned my desk, so of course, all my scraps I threw out. <laughs> I 
in my desk before on my vacation and I couldn't, couldn't find anything when I came back. I think that's a probably a retired product. So um, let's see, Carly R was asking us to link the resist tags that you're using. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can give you the name of the company, but they are Tattered Angels. You can Google Tattered Angels. Um, they had a lot of tags and masks and things like that. But Bria Reese makes some. You can look up some. These are from... Prima Marketing from 2012. Somebody sent me these. So I think they were de-stashing and sent them to me. Oh, didn't you send me some of those? Yeah, there are some of them. Okay, so this is the black. Oops, if I dropped my ink in there. Carly, you're just going to have to look up resist tags. There are a lot of companies that make them resist tags. I found some. You sent me some. It's still in the package. This is resist canvas. Uh, looks like it's Prima. Yeah, Prima Marketing 2012. Yeah, I think I sent you the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see that mic on the black paper, no problem. And it's pretty green. So now I have a pretty green and now I need to name it. And what did I say I was gonna name it? Wicked Witch Green. Ew. So I have my pumpkin spice, I have everything purple and now I have my Wicked Witch Green. You can also make your own resist by doing heat embossing, Carly, keep that in mind. You don't really need to go and you know buy all new products. If you have a stamp, let me grab another yep. piece of paper here. Or if you have the resist, Ray, where is it? I made a mess here. This stuff, um, you could spray it through a stencil and it'll do the same thing. Kind of expensive though. It'd probably be cheaper to like do clear heat embossing and you can use, um, where is it? There's a dull mat a clear matte doll that would probably get you what you're looking for. Made from wow. Any kind of clear embossing will work. So, <clears throat> let me, let me demonstrate. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's you. Thank you. I know it's kind of hard to see this stuff, but it's pretty wet. Once it dries, I'll put it up against something white. Where's my Halloween tag? I lost it already. Well, you know what? Put it up against something white anyway and see if we get something if we get something fun happening. Use this one. What happens if I I get handprints everywhere? <laughs> Don't try that at home. But okay, so I'm using Versamark ink, clear sticky ink. I have a stamp I've inked up. I'm going to stamp it on this piece or I've already pre-sprayed with something. Hi Maureen. Okay. Hmm. Then I'm gonna take my clear embossing powder. This is Ranger Super Fine Clear Detail Embossing Powder. This is mine and this is the Tim Holtz, so mine definitely would need to be coated. Um, Carly, you cannot put embossing powder in a mink. Don't do that. <laughs> Good idea, Pam. <laughs>
<laughs> she said, yeah, I know that now. <laughs> All right, so here I used the Tim Holtz skeleton stencil and it looks cool like that. So here was a sprayed background I used early, I made earlier. I stamped and did clear heat embossing on it. So, hey, that looks cool. But now I wanna spray this and make it a resist. So where's my box? And this is thinner paper, so I'm not gonna spray it too much because I don't want it to get under my heat embossing. Use the new spray since it's a dark green. I saw D. Deanne was on. She was one of your winners. D, did you get your prize package I sent you? And everybody, make sure you mark your calendars for September 11th. Stamp Wars is back. Yes, she's back. Back again. That's not nearly dark enough. Where's everything purple? Don't you guys think this looks like picked raspberry? Let me see here. I mean, seedless preserves. pumpkin. All right, this isn't completely dry. And this is just regular um, paper. It's not anything special. It's not watercolor paper. All right, so now I'm going to go in with my homemade dark purple, which I call everything purple because I literally put in everything I had that was purple. It was like Three different Arteza micas. It was um, color sparks, color bursts, everything. Everything purple got put in here. T, they want to know if you can zoom in or hold up to the camera so they can see it a little better. What are we trying to see? The um, I'm going to put first. I'm going to put a piece of white so you can actually see the color. I have a clog, which is an unfortunate side effect of sprays and it happens to all of us. Picked raspberry right there, which is the, um, well, I'll never remember the names of these colors. <laughs> Pus pocus. And then I swatched out some carved pumpkin and that is the, where to go? Um, jack o' lantern, and then I swatched out some fossilized amber, and I had mixed some of my own gold in there. So this looks more like doesn't that look more like um, maybe the olive? Let me see here. The crushed olive. That's a lot of mica. A lot of mica going on. Ooh, that almost kind of looks like an x-ray, like it's glowing. It's kind of cool. But yes, you can make your own resist by just using clear, ultra fine, clear heat embossing powder. Olive. Yeah, definitely crushed olive. Watch 
blocks out my green. Honestly, Cheryl, if I knew how to make this Zoom, I would do it. <laughs> I know how to do it on my videos, but since I'm on a Zoom call and my camera is like, I have to look upside down and sideways to even see it. So hopefully you can see that better. That's cool. Yeah, I, like I see it. somehow I ended up in, um, have I been in portrait mode all night? Uh, no, you're, you're right side up. It just doesn't go all the way out on the left and the right side of the screen. It's fine. Okay. That's the gauze. I really did need a green. I only have two greens and one's like a blinding neon green and the other one is this olive green. So I'm glad I made a green now. So we'll spray these out, see what they look like. Did I zoom? Did I zoom in? No, it looks the same. Okay. I can't, I'm sorry guys, I can't zoom in. I'm trying to pinch and drag the screen, but it won't I don't go. think you can, like you said, when we're on Zoom. Yeah. I'll try and get as close as I she can. She said it's okay. She put it up on the TV. Okay. <laughs> Here's one, another ombre ribbon. I'm making a mess. That's pretty. I like that one. It's more of a dirty, grungy one, where the other one was an ombre purpley, more of a, I don't know, more of a Tracy Schultz one. <laughs> my Wicked Witch Green, and here is Golden Olivine, which still has my gum bottom. Ooh, those are two different colors, but they look cool. And you can, by the way, I know I'm kind of doing everything in a monotone kind of theme here. You mix and match to your heart's content. Yeah. And you can leave it sprayed like this, or you can add more water to dilute it, or you can add more color to darken it. There you go. I don't think that was Leo. I, th I think that was my dog. And about who knows? Yeah. <laughs> who knows? He let out a couple of barks. <laughs> See, your red looks 
something in red on my TV. Are you okay with the color? It looks like a bloody red. It does. That's what I'm looking for. So the, yeah, this one I had mixed with another, with the uh, flickering candle. Well, I didn't mix them, but I sprayed them both on the same and let them move. Let's see, which red did I just do? I can't remember on the small samples. I think this one. Oh, happy. Okay. I thought you said, okay. Okay. I see. Yeah. I think I'm not sure. Let's see. Hello, Nancy Faye. <laughs> Ahoy. Um, so Jerry, which dog? Um, I have a Chihuahua, I have a Chow Mix, and I have a Labrador. And the Lab doesn't bark. He was a service dog for my friend that I used to work with. And he got old and had to retire. She could only have one dog. And so I didn't want him to go to a kennel. So we took him in to live out his last years. And boy, he's, he, he just keeps going and going. He's 14 years old. That's old for a Lab. But that was Duke Nukem barking. He's my little chow mix and he's kind Duke of a Duke Nukem. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Speaking of Nukem, I made, um, I took those Distress Mica Flakes, the black ones, and mixed them with some purple alcohol ink. Man, those look cool. Show you. You find something white to put them on. See that? Yeah, hold it up to the camera a little bit. There we go. Cool. Those are the black mica flakes. I thought, you know what? I wonder if I put purple, if they'd be a really super deep purple, and they are. They're crazy purple. You know, I had to have matching mica. I made a green. But these are all just mixed with alcohol ink, not, uh, not any of the mica sprays because that wouldn't work. Orange, then these all, I also mixed with white. Not my idea, Tim's. Thanks, Jerry. You don't want to know how many cats I have. A chew. <laughs> that many. More than that. <laughs> oh, that's looking really grody, Nancy. I love it. Yeah, it just shows if you are a closer, higher concentration spray, you're going to get more spotted. You rack it up, you let it run, you let it drip a little. It's going to be more smooth so different ways of spraying are going to give you different effects different concentrations of mica mm -hmm. that looks like it to me it reminds me of like plague skin like it just looks like yeah. it, frozen. it looks like frog skin like so immediately i was like frog. oh we gotta put a monster on that yeah it needs a monster i don't know man i think you ought to cut your frank Thing out of it. Oh, that's a good idea. Ooh, a real looking one. It's not bad. This is a retired Creative Vision stamps one. Then I can go in with my color pencils and I can fill in and color it too. Oh, no need for that. No need for that, Nancy. That is perfect, just like that. Yeah, they're like, cut a Frankenstein out of it. Yeah, I'll have to use my new Spellbinders dies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, guys, we've been hanging out for two hours and change. You got any last minute questions, concerns, things you want us to try out? Thank you, Tracy, for hanging out with me. We'll have to do this more often. 
Absolutely. I really appreciate that. It's fun. And again, if you guys want to do any kind of shopping, your affiliate um, dollars that you guys help, we get a little bit of a commission. It goes right back into the group. Um, I am going to be giving away some prizes here because I have a 22,000 subscriber giveaway going on. We have 3,000 subscribers in um, our FSC group. If you haven't joined us there, go check us out. It's foilingsnobsclub at gmail.com. Make sure you go over and subscribe to Tracy's channel, Not Afraid of Color. And uh, we will have links for uh, Technique Junkies where you can get the Shimmering Bliss. Uh, those are $4.99 for a two ounce bottle. And I believe there are 25 different colors. Um, we will support Tracy's link. Tracy gives us a little bit of a discount for that. Uh, Rangers link or scrapbook.com if you are interested in getting any of the Ranger sprays or mica stains. Um, remember, there's Dilusions, there's also Tim Holtz, and if you want to make your own, you can go on Amazon and you can purchase the products that we've showed you to make your own with the spray bottles, the micas, the uh, color sparks, the color art pigments, primary element pigments. Um, those are all on Amazon and you can use my Amazon link to purchase them. Remember, if you start on my Amazon link, um, when you start putting things in your basket, it doesn't matter if it's in my shop or not. I do get credit. If you buy a propane heater and you start on my Amazon link, I will get a little bit of credit and it doesn't cost you anything. So it's completely free for you guys to help support us. The only thing you have to do is just click on our links, please. That really does help us out and we really do appreciate it. And like I said, that goes into the, the PayPal kitty and that pays for postage to mail prizes to you guys. And birthday cards. Um, let's see, 3,000 plus members. How many birthdays is that? <laughs> birthday cards, postage. Uh, yeah, lots of, lots of things. I cannot find. I thought I lost my hard paper, my 120 pound heavy card stock. Okay. I've been pulling my hair out. I think I did use it all, you guys. <laughs> Time to shop. Because I have kind of torn this room apart cleaned everything up put everything back i cannot find my paper anywhere you guys i think i did use it all making all the cards so i bought some more yes. so and carly had a question about how you flatten something that's heat embossed honestly you just work with it you really yeah. when you're heat embossing just make sure you're moving 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 but uh -huh. just work the paper gently work it and it'll yep. work flat um, because you can't really put your heat embossing in a mink or a, a laminator because right. yeah, it'll smush it. The thicker your paper, the better too, because that paper mm -hmm. will hold up to the moisture and the heat better. So if you can use 120 pound cardstock or, or something thicker, but if you're doing mm -hmm. heat embossing, there's two secrets. One, let your gun heat up. You want to let that heat up for about 10 to 20 seconds. The hotter it is, when it gets to the wax, the embossing, um, you kind of want to move it around so the whole area is warm. And then once you see it starting to melt, focus on one corner and then gently move it across your image. And then once it's done, do a quick once over and that's it. Do not overheat because you <laughs> overheat it. You're cooking your paper and that's when you're going to get that. You're going to get that issue. So let the gun warm up everywhere and then start in one corner and then slowly move your way across the image and then it'll all melt and remember one thing um and i i, I figured this out because this is actually um heat transfer vinyl that i put on paper and in order to do heat transfer vi vinyl you have to heat the paper with that big old fat iron right and I noticed my paper was steaming. So your paper has a lot of moisture in it. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason why it starts to warp. So you want to be, be gentle, be nice, go top, bottom, top, bottom. Well, I had a lot of fun, Tracy. Did you have fun? I did, yes. <clears throat> did our audience have fun? Did you guys learn new ways to use your sprays? I talked about at least a dozen. We talked about at least 12 ways to use your sprays. 
Look at my moon. I've been very impressed with my moon. Both moons. Yeah, Jim, this is heat transfer vinyl. Um, and it's, you know, color shifter stuff. And um, because my paper had moisture in it, even though I tried to get most of the moisture out, it bubbled like that. I thought it was really cool. So I kept it. <clears throat> this one is the same. It's that color shifter heat transfer vinyl. Yep. Embossed. Well, I hope you guys are all encouraged to get your sprays out and play with them. And again, it doesn't have to be mica sprays. You probably have distressing sprays or distress mm -hmm. oxide sprays or make your own glitter sprays. Or um, one of the things we didn't talk about, Tracy, was some of us have those Crafters Companion color ink pots. Yep. Yep. You yep. can put some of those in a jar and make them into glitter sprays. Yep, you sure can. Yeah, the spectrum, the spectrum noir. Yeah, spectrum noir. You can noir. take these guys noir. and you can put them in a spray bottle. Yeah, dump the whole thing, babies and all. Yep. <laughs> that was the one thing I did want to bring up. I did <coughs> like in the Ranger ones that there were babies. None of the other ones had babies. Yeah, I put a help. couple of fake pearls in, in a couple of mine. That's just a to, great idea. Yeah. They'll be pretty pearls when the when the bottles dry. I doubt it because they'll probably resist the <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, you I like said... that? <laughs> yeah, I just was put this uh, heat transfer vinyl on black paper, cut it up and then embossed it. All right, guys, don't forget to thumbs up on your way out. Thanks for joining us. Join us again, September 11th at 8 p.m., not 7 p.m., 8 p.m., because we have a special guest joining us. 8 p.m. Saturday night, September 11th. Be there or be square. Yeah, if you don't come to our Stamp Wars after our little vacation hiatus, then don't even talk to me. <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding. Just kidding. I just don't want anybody to be upset that they missed it because they didn't put it on their calendar. They didn't get notifications. And before you log off, go over to Not Afraid of Color and follow Tracy and all of her wonderful quickies and hacks and fun <laughs> things that you can learn from her. Thank you again for joining me, Tracy. I had a lot of fun. Thank you for inviting me, Nancy. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>